My name is Christine Tran. I'm the founder of Witches. Witches came about through a conversation about three years ago with a high school friend of mine. And we were just so infatuated with how much creative energy was coming in and out of Bushwick that we wanted to create a platform to showcase and bring all these artists together. So it started off as a one-off party at Tandem Bar. We brought in DJs and performance artists into the space and it started off as a fun night. Kendall was one of the first, I guess, like original witches to attend a lot of the events and very supportive. I was really loving parties at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Part of my mission at MANA is to make sure all of these different types of people interact with each other. Young artists, established artists, collectors, galleries, and one of our two residency programs is the ESKFF residency program, where Eileen Kaminsky provides seven artists at a time free space to create for three to four months. I saw a direct parallel between Eileen's residency program and Witches. They can both provide what the other group needed. I just have an obsession with talented people and working with them every day, it's just like continually inspiring and just finding creative ways to support them is what I'm really obsessed about. I think Kendall shares that same obsession and passion for that. Which is about celebrating the other. It's about coming together, empowering one another, supporting each other, and creating. To me, it's really about the female identity empowerment. That's my personal goal and energy that I put into witches and all these women are incredible creators, incredible individuals. A lot of the artists that I work with, honestly, they work in their living rooms. It's these plastic tarped areas. This is a safe space for you to explore and you know even explore different mediums. With Minka, I knew she did illustrations. She never did large format paintings before. She spent many nights, days here, like pretty much like all-nighters. Painting for me is about breaking down my analytical brain. So the way I've been working, it's very process-based. When I first started these pieces, I didn't know how to separate my mind wanting to make representational work, which is all that I've made for the last few years, and instead go back you know, to that much more conceptual, abstract part of myself. I use a very particular color palette, white, black, gold, red, and cream, and that's it. So my sculptures I've also been working on, I mean, they're, they're quite connected to the paintings. Working across multiple media helps me because I have a very short attention span. <laughs> I just had this dream one night about chrysalises and on a personal level where I am in my life right now, I'm sort of changing a lot of things, moving in different directions. And I'm also going back to um, processes, sewing plastic around the whole form, you know, and then using it in a way that takes it back to the individual, to the human, to the self. I'm this creature and I'm putting this out into the world in this time and whatever other creature wants to look at it, they can make it into their own little world. It's an invitation to step into me. I was approached to make a book by Karina Reynolds at Small Editions. I started thinking about how you could experience multiple paintings in one sitting and how a flat work could engage with the viewer physically. It's like time-based, so the experience of flipping through it is part of the piece. So that book really got me thinking about the experience of seeing two images at once and what that does in the brain and it's kind of directed my work since. Initially I was just an abstract painter and then I started thinking about the role of technology and mediation, how ab abstraction and perception has been affected by technology and the reproduction of images. I make paintings, bookworks, and videos that all come from digital processes. It's meant to be like a little subjective and it's about color and movement and spatial relationships, but it's also about the relationship between the digital and the physical. I start with an image that doesn't exist in the real world and then gets translated into video, into painting, and then back into the digital, reflecting back on the way we see the little slips of materiality that happen between each medium. I'm Jelaine. I'm KB and we're the House of Ia. We've been working on a series of work that we call The Humans Project. A lot of the work is playing in duration and in time-based practices, um, including collecting parts of our body, um, collecting materials that are created and alchemized by our body. 
So we're sourcing 90% of the materials for this work from our bodies. Yeah, we're also experimenting with a lot of new materials and sewing a lot with fur. A lot of film work that we're doing is like soaking our film in different bodily fluids and then taking photographs with that. So yeah, we're doing a lot of experimentation. Just looking at nature and kind of this like naked, raw element of nature and somewhat seeing our bodies in the same way without having to manicure them so much. Reintroducing my own grotesque nature and something that's really interesting and beautiful to work with. So the exhibition opening here will consist of this paper piece, which is a durational sculpture, and also two live duration-based performances with video projection mapping and body-based installation. So looking at how we relate to time even, or to the unknown spaces, or to natural states of being that are maybe scary or horrific, and then going into those and kind of seeing what's there and what, what makes up the association. I'm less interested in creating a body of work where there's an ease in consumption, and I think for me it's more interesting to create an experience I think that comes a lot with doing duration-based work and duration-based performance. The only way that we can source the knowledge that we're getting is actually from tapping in and feeling into our bodies and it's not something that we can source from the internet or it's not something that we can just put out onto the internet and expect that it can be understood in a certain way. We're not wanting to create this kind of beginning, middle, and end of a performance that somebody can stay and then watch really easily and leave. It's like if you'd like to see the whole thing or have the whole experience, you may have to be there for four hours. This trek we do from Bushwick to Mana every day plays a really big part in just like arriving and also wanting to really take our time here. House of Ayer I, inter I interact with a lot. We have an incredible connection. They're amazing ladies and a lot of, it's interesting, our work is very different, but we have so many um, of the same interests and philosophies and things like that. So that's been really great. We find ourselves there alone often, or with Minka often. I'm really interested in Monica Mirabai's work and she works a lot with glitches and with the body. And I, I think a collaboration in the future could be awesome. Anna gave us an opportunity to show in their most recent exhibition series. And it was really a great opportunity for the artists to be able to elevate their works in this really pristine, beautiful space that is Mana. So there were two rooms. Um, one room was a lot of the hung works. So Miriam documented the life of a famous hijab designer. And she was inspired by reality television. And then the other room, we completely blacked out the windows and that was a full digital installation room in which Monica Mirabili and the House of Ia shared that space, and that was a collaborative space. It's an intimate moment. That's the beautiful thing about performance work, is that it's an immersive experience. It's the smells, the feeling, the warmth of the space, the warmth of the lighting, and that's, that was what was really beautiful about the collaboration between the two artists, too, is because they collaborated on the soundscape and even the projections going through into the space lit the space a certain way. Like, I really love that. I'm here to support the artist's work. Being a woman wasn't a prerequisite for applying. It's not necessarily like a, a theme of work that I look for when I'm bringing these artists. It's an interpersonal connection that I have with the artists. I think it's an intelligent female consciousness just from conversations and like their intentions within the work itself and their processes. In the last few years and sort of really, um, you know, questioning what it is to be feminine and sort of realizing how, you know, in the middle I feel. <laughs> I explore what it means to be female or what it means to be male or what it means to play in masculinity and femininity. My work is not about being a female, it's about being a human. All art is personal, and the work that they're showing you in that moment, it's beyond, it's a, it's a part of them that they're giving you. 